Hey, what's up, guys? This is an email question, basically asking me to go over what is dynamic range. And I checked, and I actually don't have a video go over, going over this. So, yeah, what better time than to do that now for some reason? Okay, so I'm going to start off by playing a drum loop. All right, that's a cool little drum thing. So what you notice is there is your loud parts and then your quiet parts. And in between the loud parts and the quiet parts is a range, right? There's a range to audio. So you have the range from, I guess, absolute zero. It's, you know, negative 96 dB. But we'll just say, like, it's no sound whatsoever. And then you have the peak, which is zero, right? You, you know, you can go over zero. That's another subject. But yeah, that's the range of audio that we're working in. So think of it like, you know, like you're in Photoshop or you have a camera. Let's just say you have a camera, right? And you take a picture and there's like black parts and then there's like uh, bright parts on it, right? Like, you, like you're in an interior and you take a picture of outside and the exposure, let's just assume the exposure is kind of what I have in my head right now. You can have, you know, darker than dark. You can have like an absence of, an ab, an ab, an absence of photons and then have even less photons so that's the dynamic range of the dark and with the light you ever notice that like you know you get like saturated like really bright like all you see is like white that's the dynamic the the range basically it's the range between dark and white basically the same thing happens in audio but when people say like dynamic range in audio they mean the range between the quiet and the loud sounds. And if you match the quiet and the loud, you get less dynamic range and your tracks sound louder. So I'm going to demonstrate that, but first, I actually didn't do this. What am I doing? I just forgot. But I'm going to open up that filter. Please save me. I'm going to drop in Pro L because this will give us a kind of a, an overtime over timey kind of metering thing. Right now we have like a, an oscilloscope, like an overtime readout, and then we have our uh, thing that will give us an idea of what the peaks are and what the average loudness is, right? So I'll give that a play right now. Right, doesn't even register. I gotta increase the, the range here to negative 48 dB. Right, so that line right there, that line is the average. These are the peaks, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something. I'm going to basically squish down those peaks and bring up those quiet parts. And you'll notice something that, you know, it doesn't necessarily get, it doesn't go over like zero. It doesn't increase its, its amplitude, but it does get louder. And uh, yeah, this is a fun thing with audio. So yeah, I'll just add in a compressor, bring down the attack, and I'll just bring down the threshold. And you'll notice something that these quiet parts will get, will have more amplitude. They'll match up with these guys, and it'll actually sound louder. It's pretty, pretty neat. See the difference? And that's what people say when they have dynamic range. So the loudness wars basically means these tracks that are coming out that have not a whole lot of dynamic range in them. Because the quiet parts are like that. Like that is supposed to be quiet, but it's not. But yeah, let's just, let's just imagine that this is an entire track and it's being like squished through like several compressors and just being destroyed. All right, so that's not a whole lot of dynamic range. You can't even really discern the drums anymore. And that's with, uh, I, what I did there right there is I kind of turned the ratio to infinity to one, have a very fast attack and the threshold's all the way down. We're basically assaulting these drums. Um, but yeah, you totally get the idea. All right, so I want to explain something else. So what makes something loud is the 
how okay how they detect loudness is with something called the average it's called an rms like rms meter which it takes like it doesn't take like a single slice of time which is the peak it takes the average over a period of time and then it spits out a result so what makes things more dynamic and how you your job as a producer engineer a scientist your job to, to create a balance between like you know keeping some dynamics but making it commercially viable and loud is you want to set up a good relationship between the peaks and the rms and i'll give you I'll give you an example here i'm just going to get rid of that compressor so right now i want you to focus on this uh, pro l thing right here Right, we got our peak and then we have our average right here and when things get perceivably louder the peak and the average begin to match up right they begin to match up and that's what you you want to shoot for you want to shoot for i guess a peak of uh negative one db and then the average you want that line to be hovering at around whatever your uh genre or whatever you're shooting for so check this out I'm gonna I'm gonna compress the hell out of this just for the sake of example. I'm actually gonna leave the attack a little bit, but I want I want you to pay attention to the where the peaks are and the RMS, which is that line that appears at the bottom. So check this out. So that's an extreme example. You notice how when the peaks kind of go down and the RMS meets with it, almost, then, you know, it sounds louder, but it's actually kind of getting quieter. But yeah, uh, there's no there's there's no possible way to get your RMS and your peak to be exactly at zero unless you're doing something weird with something, even if you're using like white noise. But I don't know. Okay, well, I guess you can try that. Anyway, that was a fun video. I uh, hope you learned stuff. Take care and have a good one.